Hi there, I want to show you an HR bot that runs inside of Microsoft Teams. This is using the Q&A Maker database as a knowledge base and Azure bot service and it's here running inside of Teams. So you can see we have a chat going on right here with the HR bot. So if I say hi, it's going to respond with hello. I can say what are the benefits here and it'll respond with an answer. In this case, it's given not only an answer, but also clicks to go to other, drill down into more information, such as disability, health insurance, family medical leave. Now you can make the HR bot uh, have whatever information you want by manipulating or adding and subtracting from the knowledge base that's inside a Q&A maker. That's very easy to do. Uh, so if I keep going with other questions, how do I add a dependent to the insurance. You can see it comes back with an answer. And the answer is add a dependent. To add a dependent to your insurance, fill out this form. And if I click this form, it will open up a form, which I'll drag over here. And it kind of doesn't fit in the screen, but there it is. And you could fill that out. And then, I mean, user could fill it out and then have submitted to HR. So the person got not only information, but links to other forms. So that's a, a really good way to automate HR. Now you can put all kinds of information in here. So let's, go, let's look at a payday. And it's coming back with pay information. Now you also notice if I type payday wrong, see I, that's not the correct spelling, and try again, it's going to come back with the information right here. Now how do you get to this HR bot? Well, you can either go here and uh, click that and it will show up and then do a search for it, HR bot. You could go to uh, up here and look for it. It already comes in my list because I found it already, but if I did, it would go right there. Just like you, uh, a person, you would try and start a conversation with somebody in your company. You can start a conversation with HR bot. You can also have it pinned to your, uh, you know, chat window here as one of your, one of your easy to get to uh, uh, bots right here or, or people, you know, you could pin it right there and you have it right there ready to go. So then, if you go to apps here inside of the uh, Teams apps, you see HR Bot is there also. And if you want to go to HR Bot, you can see some information about it here. And then you could open it up in a team or a chat. A team can run; it can be part of a team or it can be part of a chat. Let me show you being part of a team. If you go here, and this it depends on what scope you give this this bot when you uh, install it with the app manifest. So if you want to start a new conversation with this while in a team or while in a uh, group chat, you have to do at HR bot and then it comes back with that kind of blue, you know, uh, wording. And then you can type in uh, how, let's see, what is the, um, when is the next payday? And it'll come back with uh, the answer, which of course that's a, that shows to the whole group not just, you, you know, you individually, like before I was doing a one-on-one -on -one chat. Now I'm doing a group chat or a team chat and it is uh, showing up to everybody in the group. So this would be useful if you want to show that information to everybody. Otherwise you can do the one-on-one -on -one chat, which I'm doing right here. Now, a couple other things. If you go to apps in the, uh, in the teams here, you go to apps, you have your uh, available apps right here. And we go to HR bot. And you can see that it opens up and you see information about it, what it does here. This information comes from when it was first installed. It's installed using the App Studio. Once you develop it in Q&A Maker and Azure Bot Service, use the App Studio in order to uh, put it into Teams. So here's Teams coming up. And we go to Manifest Editor. See Chat, Manifest Editor. So here's Manifest Editor. And this is, this is one that I have already added. If you want to create a new one, you would here or import one. But here it is, uh, it's uh, here already. And this is where you, the manifest editor is what we were seeing earlier as far as a uh, step-by-step -step to get it installed. You know, what the name is, what the description and identification, all these things are here inside the uh, app manifest. Usually an admin does this and then it, pu it puts it into Teams and makes it available like, like I was saying from right here. HR bot is available uh, there. So then we're back to the one-on-one -on -one conversation with HR bot. Now we will do another video on developing Q developing the bot in Q&A Maker and in Azure 
to get to the point where then you can use that app manifest app studio with the manifest editor to put it in there but this one this video was to show you using the bot inside of teams thank you hello our earlier video on hr bot showed you the bot in action in teams now let's go look how it's made in q a maker here so to get to q a maker you go to q a maker.ai it's part of microsoft services you sign in with your Azure Office or Office 365 account. And I've already done that on this tab. You can see that I'm now logged in. And we have options here to see my existing knowledge bases or create a new knowledge base. So in this, the existing knowledge base is Crow Canyon HR FAQs. I can open that up. And now bots already been created for this and this is what is running in Teams and it was demonstrated in the earlier uh, video. So here's the knowledge base, and you can see that there's a number of questions and answers in here. Question and answer pairs, they're called. And when, when you have a question, you have the main question and then some variations of it that users might type in to help uh, give help the bot know what to answer when the variations are put in. And then the answer is over here in markup language with the slash n and slash slash n and all that. So here's the answer. Here's the questions. This editorial means that I added these as a Q&A pair one by one. That's easy to do. I go add a Q&A pair, type a question in about HR, uh, say uh, parking policy. I mean, we have a parking policy. I don't know. Enter uh, parking spots are allotted by your manager. I don't know, something like that. And you can do some alternative phrasing, parking, parking spots, uh, parking, parking lot, you know, parking, parking lot, whatever you want to do, uh, parking lot, things like that, you know, whatever. This is just making this up as I go, but that's just adding it as an editorial, uh, which, you know, add a Q&A pair. The next thing you can do is import uh from a file. These were imported from a file. Uh, this is a chit chat file that comes with Q&A Maker. And this is a file I made up in a spreadsheet that is I, I imported here. So let's uh, save and train this so it doesn't lose the set settings I just made. That you know, the new edition of the parking. And when, it, when it's saved, then it will go over to settings right here and take a closer look at what's going on. So this is where you can add uh, more to your knowledge base. You can add or delete a chit chat data set. Set chit chat is like a personality of the bot. That's not really the direct answers of HR, but like if somebody asks what's your age or what color do you like or something like that to the bot, then it can answer uh, that set of questions. But kind of frivolous in my mind, but some people like it. Give it a kind of quote unquote a personality. Now, if uh, you want to go, you go to URL, uh, which is, has an FAQ set up already like maybe you have manual or PDF or a, a website that has a FAQs on it then you can go and put that URL in and the Q&A maker will make an attempt to read it and create question and answer pairs out of it you can also just add a file from your file system and go here and uh, put a file in and that's what I did with the Q&A maker that, that file structure is a spreadsheet that has a question and answers. Let me uh, get that going here. And I'm opening it up on the other screen and then I'll bring it over and show you what it, uh, it looks like. So here's the file Q&A maker. It's a spreadsheet. It has a column A with the questions and column B with the answers. Here we have, for example, advances and no advances. Our company does not allow it. Now, if you wanted to add like an alternative phrasing on this, you could do that by simply copying the same answer to another uh, cell and then typing in what you want the question to be, the alternative phrasing to be. So you might say something like um, pay advances, payroll advance, you know, something like that. So now you have two uh, alternatives here. You have a payroll advance or advances given the same uh, answer right here. Anyway, so if you, I'm not going to save that, but if you did, and then you can just import that into here by adding the file and then import it in and then it becomes part of the database knowledge base so now let's go look at the uh, you can also export so one thing you want to do is export 
and save it so you don't lose any of your knowledge, especially if you're doing a lot of editorial. That's a caution that I'll give you right now. If you delete one of these right here, you lose it for good. It just There's no way to recover it. So you better have this file someplace or this TSV file someplace. Well, that's already comes with knowledge with a Q&A maker, so no big deal. But if you did some stuff in the editorial and added your own, you'll lose all of those changes you made. You won't be able to get it back. So it's good to export it out. And then you can also import if you create another one and all that. So then we went to uh, save and train. And I think we don't, I don't think I need to do that again, but now I'm gonna publish it. And we're gonna publish this one. And when it's published, see if you were first creating this QA Maker knowledge base, uh, you could create the bot right here just by the next step. But we already have it created, so we're going to go over here back to the knowledge base. Now let's, let's drag the HR bot over for a second and go to the bot here, the one on one chat with the bot, and ask it about what I just put in. I put in about parking. Uh, I need a parking spot. I just put that in. See, it's just exactly what I put in. From there, it already knows that, uh, you know, it's already added to the HR bot in Teams. It's that simple. Once you have it set up, you can come here, add, add either a file or individual Q&A pairs, and then it's gonna show up in your bot uh, basically immediately. So that's pretty cool. You've got Q&A Maker, you've got Teams, and the Azure Bot Service is facilitating the uh, interaction between Teams and this knowledge base. Okay, thank you. Hello, this is the third section of this three-part video series we're doing on the HR Bot. The, the first part of this video, which you just saw uh, earlier, was on the HR Bot and Teams. The second part was on the knowledge base for that bot in Q&A Maker. And now we're on the Azure Bot Service, which is the middle piece between the Q&A Maker knowledge base and the Teams Bot. So here we are in Azure. You can go right to the bot. It is listed here, but to, just to show you in case it isn't, you can type in bots and you'll see bot services. And then you can go to the bot that you uh, created as um, part of Q&A Maker. So here it is. And we'll go this, back to this in a moment. Let's go over to Q&A Maker and see what's going on there. So you have a knowledge base. This is a knowledge base we talked about in the second portion of these videos. And it has, uh, has the information that it is the content for the bot. But if we, let's just see what happens when you create a knowledge base. Okay, when you don't have any knowledge bases going at all, the first thing it's gonna do is ask you to create a Q&A service in Microsoft Azure. I did this already before I created the knowledge base that is now the HR knowledge base. That is running also in Azure. So if you go to here to the dashboard, you can see that there's a app service, the Q&A maker service right here. You can actually get to that by just going to Q&A in Azure and you'll see the cognitive services. And here it is HR bot. This is the Q&A service for it. A lot of properties here. So when you uh, go to that create bot right here, create, I mean, when you go to create a Q&A service, it's gonna ask you for things and you'll set up the service. Once you have the service ready, you connect your service to the, Q, to the, to the KB and then you can go uh, create the KB and uh, name it and populate it. Now, the thing is, if you already have the Q&A service, then there's no need to create it. See, it says it right here. If you already have Azure Q&A service for this KB, skip this step. So after you create the Q&A service, refresh this page, select your service. So we'll see that there is a service already here uh, on the tenant, Crocan Systems, on the subscription name, the partner network. There is an HR bot service already existing, English language. So I could go here and create another knowledge base if I wanted to, and then populate it like we talked about in the second portion of this, uh, this three-part series that we're doing right now. But it already exists. So there's no need for me to go through that again unless I wanted to create a second one. So now we have the uh, HR knowledge base right here. And when I open it, you can see that you can publish, when you publish it, it asks you the question uh, if you want to create a bot or not. But in this case, I already have the bot. So I already have the Q&A service and I already have the bot. But if you didn't, you take the step-by-step -step process. You'd 
go uh, go to add a create a knowledge base. It would ask you to start, set up the Q and A service in Azure. Once you create your knowledge base in Q and A Maker and publish it, it then asks you if you want to create a bot. In this case, I don't have to because I already have the bot existing. I did this earlier, so create a bot is not needed. If you want to go back and edit the uh, knowledge base, you just click Edit Service, and then you're back to the knowledge base. So that's what we have going on here in Azure, and this is the bot that uh, we're talking about right here. Let's go back to it. I mean, that's the Q&A service right here, but let's go back to the bot. To the bot, to the bot, to the bot, bot, bot. Here we go. Here's the bot. And uh, here it is. Now we're going to see about how this got connected to Teams, right? So we have our uh, Teams chat going on with the HR bot over here. Here's the bot that we were looking at in the first part of it. First part of this three-part video. And so this is what is um, running in Teams is the connected to the Azure bot service in that Q&A knowledge base. Okay, so let's look at what's going on here. Here's an overview, activity log, access control, all these things. The most important of this for our case is the channels. When the channel, when you first create the bot, it gives you a web channel, web chat by default, and then you could add any other channels you want. I added Teams already, so it's up here. Teams would be right here and you'd add it. Here's other channels you can add, Facebook Messenger, Kick, Telegram, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That's not really relevant to this video. We did add the Microsoft Teams one. So we go here to edit and see what this is all about, is that you can configure, uh, you can configure it for messaging. It's available by default. Calling, if you want to set up like calls with, the, with this bot, you know, you can call up the bot or publish. And then when you publish, it gives you instruction on how to publish your bot as a line of business in your organization and the tenants app catalog, publish your bot as an app in the team store. So you have these choices right here and it gives you information on how to do it. This one right here, I opened up right here. Uh, come back up here. Manage your apps in the team to admin center. View apps in your catalog. You can go through all this information, upload a new one. Uh, we talked about the Teams App Studio in the first section of this. So let's go over here and look at that again. You have it in your bots, your apps. You go to App Studio. Here we are. And open. Oh, manifest Editor. And in Manifest Editor, you have the HR bot. HR bot is connected to the uh, bot that's right here. This is it in Teams and this is it in Azure behind it. Uh, so there you go, HR bot. It's uh, connected to that service in Azure. Here we go, all these things right here. Okay. And then it appears in the apps when you go here and you can choose it from your from the users can choose it here because you uploaded it to the Teams tenant catalog, HR bot, right there, right? So anyway, we are here, and that's channels, messaging. It's that simple, you just go to channels, select Teams, you can try it right here if you want it, or test it in the web chat right here. Let's go again, ask the bot about parking. Parking, there we go parking spots are allotted by facility. So I changed this to include the uh, the uh, facility, not by the manager, because that makes much sense, but by facilities. That's a change I made in the Q&A maker, not knowledge base. Okay, a couple other things I'll show you here. There's configuration. If you need any of this information, it's there. If you go to settings, you can upload a custom icon right here and, and what the display name will be in your team. Endpoint, all this. So. You know, this is where you can control it. Also, you can see the activity log and uh, other information about this uh, use of this uh, Azure bot. So let's go through that again and just summarize. There is Q&A Maker. You first create a knowledge base in Q&A Maker. It's going to ask you if you want to create the Q&A service. Once you do that, you can connect your Q&A service, which is running in Azure, to your knowledge base. Once you connect it, you can name it and populate it. Once you have it populated, you can publish it. And if you publish it for the first time, it will ask you to create a bot if you want to create a bot. And then when you create the bot, it will show up in your Azure service. Once it shows up in your Azure service, 
you can use channels to connect it to Teams. Once it's connected to Teams, you can go to the App Studio in Teams and then have it show up here in uh, by creating this entry in the manifest editor and saving that and then it's going to show up in your team so that's how it, it kind of goes together i hope these series of three videos gives you some explanation on how this how these things work together and how the bot is useful for hr purposes okay one last thing i want to show you is the team's admin center inside of office 365 this is the team's admin center you have to go to admin and then the team's admin to get here once you're in the team's admin center you know you have uh, ability to control a lot of factors about teams but one of them is the team's apps and you go here to manage apps once you go to manage apps you'll see that uh well you'll see a lot of apps but you also see that the hr bot is here because it was uploaded through that app man app studio and here it is right here and with this you can update you can delete it you can say whether it's allowed or not and if you set up permission policies you can decide if this bot can be used by everybody or just a certain group of people by setting it up uh, that way or you have the setup policies here permission policies well setup policies set up what shows up on the team's interface permission policies what apps are available to people so you can play around with this to <coughs> control access to that HR bot just want to show you that one last thing Okay, there's a lot to this. HRBot is extremely useful, a very, very useful tool. And it has a lot in it that uh, is of great benefit to uh, your organization. Now, it doesn't have to just be HR. It could be support bot. It could be asking questions about anything. So uh, you can put whatever information you want in it. Just update the Q&A Maker database and, and uh, it shows up. Once you have everything set up, it's a piece of cake to get this working and keep it updated. Let's see, uh, add a dependent, add a dependent to the to the insurance, okay? And it's gonna come back with some information here. The yeah, dependent valid form, I did that in the first part. Let's look at a funny here. What is your favorite color? This is the chit chat stuff that you don't have to include in the bot, but it's fun to play around with sometimes. Yes, what is your name? That brings up a question, too. You can, you don't have to name it Crow Canyon HR Bot. You can call it Sally, Amy, John, whatever you want to do. Okay, this one doesn't have a name. Okay, before we get too, uh, more into the funny stuff here, let's, uh, let's end this, and hopefully this has been a useful uh, set of three videos for you about the HR Bot. Thank you.